Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a full review on Vanilla Diorama from La Collection Privée from Christian Dior. I know I am late to the game when it comes to this fragrance, but finally I have it, I tested it, and today I'm going to tell you all about it. So if you want to know all about Vanilla Diorama, and also comparison with other fragrances that have similar composition, then please keep on watching. But before we start, if you are new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Noura and on this channel I mostly talk about fragrances. So if this is your thing, then definitely subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload any new videos. Also follow me on Instagram where I do some exclusive content that I don't do here on YouTube. Unboxing, first impression and all the good stuff. So make sure to follow me also there. And without further ado, let's start. So Vanilla Diorama is inspired by a famous dessert that the Christian Dior used to eat in Maxime. It was specially created for him and it's actually a mysterious uh, dessert that no one really knows how it looked like or even uh, the ingredients. All what is known about this dessert from, I think, the descriptions from Christian Dior himself was a lot of vanilla, glazed oranges and bitter chocolate. So François de Marchy, the nose behind this fragrance and also the ink perfumer uh, for Dior, collaborated with a famous uh, pastry chef who made a version of this dessert in a modern way. Uh, there is a video on YouTube where both of them are um, discussing the dessert and the fragrance etc. I will leave it linked uh, down below if you want to watch it. So we can safely say that François de Marchy actually was inspired by the interpretation of that chef of that famous dessert, if that makes any sense. So the inspiration actually tells us already what kind of a fragrance this is. So Vanilla Diorama is a beautiful, gourmand, spicy vanilla with a hint of freshness and booziness in it. It's such a cozy and warm fragrance. It's very comforting, like a comforting food, if you know what I mean. It's absolutely gorgeous. It was not exactly love at first sniff for me but i liked it enough to immediately buy it uh, after testing it for the first time but the more i wear it the more i like it it's one of these fragrances that really grow on you very addictive so since i bought it i actually wore it quite a lot you can see uh, the dent i made in the in, in the fragrance and i'm actually uh, thinking about getting a bigger bo bottle which means a lot if you know me anyway let's get to the fragrance in the top notes you have orange pink pepper and lemon so quite a fresh opening in the mid you have rum cacao and cardamom and let me tell you the cardamom here is absolutely beautiful anyway and in the base you have bourbon vanilla sandalwood and patchouli so the opening of this fragrance is quite fresh as you can imagine you will get this beautiful uh, blast of sweet oranges along with the vanilla and some spiciness from the cardamom and the pink pepper very quickly the orange starts to fade it it's still there but it starts to fade and the cardamom is the note that you will get more of and you start also to get some hints of the cacao here and it, with time it's, it gets warmer and sweeter it's never too sweet uh, this fragrance also a gourmand is a gourmand that i think people who are not really into gourmand like myself would appreciate because of the spiciness and this freshness in this fragrance it gets also slightly powdery but still fresh from the orange and also the cardamom. Cardamom in general gives this cooling effect uh, in a fragrance, at least to my nose. In the mid dry down, I would say the main notes that you will get is the vanilla, 
the cardamom of course some of the orange and uh, some of the rum to be completely honest the mid dry down is my least favorite uh, parts of this fragrance because it's the more perfumery if you know what i mean it smells like a perfume the dry down however is absolutely gorgeous so the more you go towards the dry down the more you get the vanilla and also the sandalwood starts to peek through and the cacao just complements this fragrance in a beautiful way and just this concoction of the over so this vanilla with some with some hint of rum and the cacao and the cardamom and a slightly fresh orange just makes this fragrance absolutely delicious it's a delicious fragrance as you all know by now i am not really into gourmand fragrances but this one i absolutely adore it's really nicely balanced uh, nothing is too much although it's the vanilla is the main character but the other notes really complement it really complement the vanilla in the best way possible everything in my opinion is in the right dosage so it's not too spicy it's not too sweet and not too boozy everything works together in a very harmonious way i know a lot of people and actually this is why it took me a while to get this fragrance uh, or to even to test it because when this fragrance was first released a lot of youtubers were disappointed it's not what everybody expected and maybe because they were expecting a very heavy sweet gourmand fragrance and this is not it although warm and cozy it has this slight freshness that just is so addictive and beautiful and balances out the whole composition in my opinion is it a good interpretation of the dessert well <laughs> we can't really say because it's a mystery no one really knows how this dessert was the only thing that i can say that since they knew that there is bitter chocolate in the cake or in the dessert this is the only thing that I would say maybe it's not really present in the fragrance because the chocolate here is really in the background and it's not a bitter chocolate. It's a beautiful fragrance anyway and I absolutely love it. When it comes to longevity and sillage unfortunately is when we have to go through some negative parts. So longevity and sillage on this fragrance is not great at all it's mostly a weak fragrance it's an intimate fragrance it has a loud opening but this doesn't remain for long it's half an hour maximum and then becomes more or less an intimate scent um when it comes to longevity after four hours you really have to go close like with your nose to really smell it but if you spray this on your clothes or hair, it will remain for a long time, like really, really long. I sprayed this fragrance on a jacket and it remained for the whole time until I washed the jacket. Amazing longevity when it comes to clothes. And also if you are into like spraying your uh, hair, it, it does remain for a long time on your hair. If you tested this fragrance and you liked it, then definitely uh, spray it on clothes, on, on hair, uh, if you are into like spraying fragrances in your hair. Now, to whom would I recommend this fragrance? I would definitely recommend this one for someone who loves vanilla and cardamom combination because these two work beautifully together in this fragrance and in my opinion it doesn't matter if you love gourmand or not when it comes to this one maybe not if you hate you absolutely hate gourmand fragrances then maybe not but for someone who is not really into gourmands or even into vanilla you should check uh, vanilla diorama also for someone who is fine with the lack of performance because as i said this doesn't perform very well so overall if you are looking for a 
warm, cozy fragrance with a lot of vanilla and a little bit of spice and that will work beautifully for autumn and winter, then check vanilla teardown. I absolutely love it and I am totally obsessed with it at the moment, as you can see. Now let's talk about similarities between Vanilla Diorama and other fragrances on the market. Uh, if you go on Fragrantica, you will see that a lot of people compare Vanilla Diorama to Fat Delicious from the same collection from Dior. And I have to say, I totally disagree. They are not similar uh, at all. To me, the only similarity is in the genre. In general, so both are kind of oriental spicy fragrances, but they are totally different in my opinion. I think why people compare it is because they have, both of them have the same um, perfumer. So, you know, perfumers, when they create a special genre, they have this DNA that you can find almost in all their creations. And definitely Francois de Machy has this when it comes to especially um, oriental fragrances with a hint of spice. He has a DNA that you can, that you can distinguish. And maybe this is why people feel like they are similar, but they are not similar, at least to my nose. Another fragrance that uh, on Fragrantica people say Vanilla Diorama reminds them of is Symphonium, something like that from Zerzhov. Unfortunately, I don't have this fragrance and I've never smelled it, so I can't tell you. But when I first smelled this fragrance, I was reminded of a fragrance that I absolutely adore and I have in my collection. And that is Tom Ford Noir Extreme. However, when I returned home and smelled them side by side, they are not similar. But why did Vanilla Diorama remind me of Noir Extreme? So when I tested these two side by side many times, I finally knew why something about Vanilla Diorama reminded me of Noir Extreme. And it is the cool fee note. I know Vanilla Diorama doesn't have like especially cool fee note, but cool fee that is present in, to, in Tom Ford Noir Extreme and also Noir Parfum is actually a kind of um, Indian gelato that has cardamom in it. I'm not talking about the perfume uh, as a whole. I'm talking about the cardamom. The cardamom in Vanilla Diorama reminds me of the cool fee note uh, in Tom Ford Noir Extreme, but they are not similar fragrances. So I just wanted to add that. So I started to think about all the fragrances that I have that have the combination vanilla and cardamom, which is actually one of my favorite combination. So I found two fragrances or two samples actually from fragrances in my collection that have cardamom and vanilla as like a main character of the fragrance. And of course, the first one is Atelier des Or. Lune Feline and also Nishane Ani. So let's start with Lune Feline. <laughs> and this is a vanilla cardamom bomb. Cardamom here is very loud. It's much more present than in Vanilla Diorama. This is a very thick, dense fragrance. There is no freshness, so not like Vanilla Diorama, where there is this orange note that helps to lift the, the fragrance. It's not here in Lumpholine. And when I compared them side by side, I suddenly realized that Vanilla Diorama, in comparison with Lumpholine, smells very designer-esque, you know? Lumpholine is a very niche fragrance. Uh, it's really out there, very dark and thick and dense. And, and also it's more unisex than Vanilla Diorama. So Vanilla Diorama, in my opinion, is quite unisex. But when I compare it to Lufeline, I find Vanilla Diorama leans more feminine, uh, while Lufeline is right in the middle. It's totally unisex. And also, Lumpheline had an amazing performance, so we can compare it even when it comes to longevity and sillage. So although they both have this cardamom vanilla combination, they are not really similar. Um, which one would I prefer? Well, 
I have to say I prefer Vanilla Diorama to Lumpheline. I know a lot of people will be shocked uh, because Lumpheline to me like this this it has a lot of woodiness also so this a lot of woody notes and also the cardamom together give me like burned rubber smell also sometimes i feel like when it's a very high quality vanilla it has kind of an animalic touch to it i don't know maybe i am crazy but sometimes especially when we talk about niche fragrances the vanilla sometimes has this animalic aspect i smell i smell burned rubber unfortunately and i know a lot of youtubers say that they have the same had the same experience with this fragrance and over time they get over it i'm not there uh, yet so for now i prefer definitely vanilla diorama and also because i really don't care about sillage so i'm not bothered by the lack of you know projection in vanilla diorama now let's get to nishani anime and oh my god is this a gorgeous scent oh, a masterpiece this is such a beautiful fragrance it's one of the best fragrances that i've ever smelled it's kind of a fresh vanilla so it has this in common with vanilla diorama but they are totally different fragrances so there is vanilla and cardamom in ami but it's very fresh and airy it has ginger uh, you can get also a little bit of the cedar oh it's so beautiful and although it's a vanilla i in my opinion it's a vanilla that you can wear all year around mm, such a gorgeous scent do i prefer it to vanilla diorama i really can't say because they are totally different this is a gourmand ishaniani for me is more on the floral side it's not a gourmand at all so i really can't compare them or even tell you which one i prefer more but what i can say is that i have now nishaniani for over five months and i didn't even add it to my wish list i'm totally in love with the scent but but i never considered buying it maybe because it doesn't represent anything in me i love it as a scent but i'm not sure that is is that it's a fragrance that i'm going to wear so for now i am totally satisfied with my vanilla diorama and it's perfect for this time of the year so, so it's a little bit cold but not too much and i usually wear it before going to bed when i am chilling out like reading something or watching a movie I wear this one. So that was it. That was my review of Vanilla Diorama. Uh, tell me in the comments down below if you have this fragrance uh, or did you test it? Uh, do you like it or not? And does it remind you of any other fragrance? Tell me in the comments down below. So uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumb up. Consider subscribing to my channel and also hit the notification bell so you will get notified when I upload a new video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time.